Hello and welcome to another Corel Draw tutorial video from Your Business Card Guy. Uh, I was asked a comment in one of the removing the background video how to remove something from inside of the photograph itself. So we don't want to remove the background around the source image or the subject that we're dealing with, but actually something that's in or on the uh, image itself. So a watermark could be a stain on a shirt, could be a, a, you know a blemish on the face, right? Somebody. Uh, I've done some work for uh, some folks where they had a photograph they wanted and their face had a lot of blemishes and so they wanted their face to be kind of cleaned up like you know proactive on there uh, sort of automatically and uh, so you can do that uh, using a, a tool known as the clone tool and it's something you do from within photo paint not within Corel draw itself so let's go ahead and take a look at that so here you know just here's a quick example of what we're talking about so this is uh, you know a photographer's mark uh, you know, I paid this professional to take my portrait, and she puts her info on here, which is again pretty standard practice. But let's say you wanted to remove that, or, or again, it was a, a stain, or it's something in the photo that you didn't know was there, and you want to remove it, or somebody gave you a picture, and they, hey, I want this picture for my business card, or I want it for a poster, I want it for whatever, and they need something removed from it. So, click on that, and go ahead and click bitmap, edit bitmap. Photo Paint opens up, and then you can zoom in to the spot that you're trying to edit. Now, obviously, you could do something you know crazy and try to go all the way to the pixel level, um, all the way down, and, and start to try to figure out what the color samples are, and, and then like paint, you know, literally grab the paint tool and say, I want this red, and put it here, and this red, and put it here, and, and go pixel by pixel. Uh, but for any intensive and purpose of, of anything beyond just a couple of pixels, it would be a nightmare. So they've uh, devised a tool known as the clone tool, and this is used throughout most of the you know, graphic design softwares. And what it does is essentially it samples an area and then copies it, clones it, uh, to another area. And the, the cool thing is you can adjust a few of the uh, uh, effects so that it's not a hundred percent. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility to sort of paint over it. You know, it's like mostly opaque but a little transparent. And so you can kind of blend it as you go. And you can also change the location of the sample that you're taking so that you paint on the source that it matches and makes sense. So within Photo Paint, you can just hit the letter C. Uh, you can also go here over the toolbar and find the clone tool. Um, but essentially, what you want is the double clone tool. And it brings up a circle for you. And the options are things like the size and also the opacity. So you can um, have it be fully opaque, you know, semi-transparent to varying degrees. And that allows you, again, a little bit of flexibility in terms of the effect that you want. Uh, obviously, you need to practice a bit and find just the right combination. So the way that it works is you need to just set up your source circle, and you can right-click wherever you want it to be. And the idea is, I'm going to go back to this tool here. Uh, it makes it a little easier. So see the gradient here. It's shadow effect, gets a little bit of a highlight effect, curves back around, shadow effect. So I can't just you know take a box make a copy of that and then paste it on and then try to align it up because this whole thing gets wider as it goes down so what I need to basically do is dynamically change what I'm sampling so that I can paint over this stuff as I go so again hitting C now I'm going to right click and that sets it up and you'll see that that stays there no matter where my cursor goes that stays there. So now as I draw or I paint, I'm, I'm left clicking now and essentially where the source is is what it's actually copying. So down here it's a little bit lighter. Up here it's a bit darker and you, again you can go and depending on the, the effect you're looking for determines where and how you're going to move. If you want to go sort of with the grain or against the grain um, you'll find you know sort of different effects you know, seem to work better for you and uh, I'm going kind of quick obviously the trick with the clone tool is that you need to be fairly patient to do a really good job uh, it's it's easy to just sort of get frustrated and want to rush 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 and then all of a sudden what you've done is you're um, looking a little bit like what you're doing which is you're just sort of modifying the image and it can look like you've sort of pasted on it um, so it, what I find is that I move a lot. I, I'm right clicking here and I'm changing my source position fair amount. And what that does is it keeps me from uh, having 
you know too much of just one sampled area, and that allows me um, to uh, make sure that it's a little more natural looking. And again, as I move my cursor up, you'll notice that the source is moving with me. So it's a, it's a relative positioning kind of a thing here. So I'm going to move back over here. This time I'm going to draw around and draw down. And so what this is doing is it's taking the, the grain, if you will. And here's, here's an example. So now I've gone too deep. And you'll notice because the source, if you can see in the very bottom there, is going over a dark spot. See that? And where I'm painting, which is a little bit up and to the right, obviously that shouldn't be dark right there. You know, if you're looking at the image itself, that's, that's the wrong area. So you have to kind of watch what you're doing um, and make sure, again, that your source, the relative position from your source and what you actually are, are pasting onto, you know, makes, makes enough sense. So, again, it's a matter of watching what you're doing changing often, you know, finding the right combination. And then again, I can change opacity and, you know, fart around a little bit with the effects here. And what that will do is um, you know, again, give you that ability to really play with the effect you want. So see here, now I've got a 15% and so that's much more like I've just, you know, I'm, I'm painting. Uh, so you play with this value here uh, to find the right blended balance because you don't want it to take all day but at the same time you want it to be fairly natural looking so again if I my source comes in here and I can kind of go along right so you'll, you'll now notice again my source is picking up the lettering and painting the lettering right so does that make Hopefully that's making sense what I'm doing there, the, uh, the quote-unquote mistakes that I'm making to, to sort of show off how the tool uh, works and doesn't work. Uh, so, again, that's a very important thing is where, what's, what's my source? What am I doing? What's my opacity? Again, uh, find the right balance and also know the relative position. So if you're lining up along a line, You'll notice in this part of the image, it's a little bit lighter here, a little bit darker here. If I needed to work this line, I can do that, but I would have to make sure that my relative position is exactly lined up. If I'm doing it like this, I'm going to be pulling dark into a position that shouldn't be. So, um, you know, it, it's a matter of um, just keeping an eye on what you're doing. I'm going to work on that a little bit. Now I'm going to come down here into this lighter stuff. It's a little bit different red. Okay, and so you can see that now I'm blending it into you know the background, uh, and it's you know it's basically the imperfections of you know any image are being copied, so it does come out with a bit of a natural look. You know, it's not just a perfectly smooth paint. Uh, that you're slapping on there and uh, that's what that's what makes the clone tool such a good um, useful tool is that you know it definitely makes it appear to be a fairly natural continuation of what you're working on because you're you're essentially sampling uh, the image around which is as close as you're gonna ever get to you know being you know perfectly you know natural And you'll notice that the distance from where your sample is to where you start is maintained. See the distance here is, is quite a bit further away. If I just click right click and then I then now I start, now it maintains a very close proximity. A little note. So again, I'm, I'm working pretty fast here trying to make this video shorter than uh, three weeks. So you can see that I've removed, you know, part of it there. And if, if you zoom out to a, a more natural, um, you know, it doesn't look horrible. 
right? You'll see the E is, is mostly gone. Uh, and then the, the lower right, I've, I've removed that. So the clone tool is a fantastic tool to use. But again, just make sure you have a little bit of patience. Play with it. Do, you know, do a lot of undo, right? If you, if you screw something up, if your source goes over something it shouldn't and you've brought, you know, you bring over uh, the wrong color into an area, uh, just undo and start it over again. And uh, again, you can use this in combination of other things. You have to remember that it's not going to be one tool that just does everything. You know, you may start out doing the clone tool like I'm doing here, and then you might decide to uh, uh, lasso an area and then add a little bit of, um, uh, you know, blend it a little bit. You know, kind of mix it up a little bit and add, uh, you know, an effect that smooths things out even more. And I'll, you know, again, same here. Right? Oh, it's like, oh no, I screwed that up completely, right? It's a computer. I can undo. It's it's uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty easy to do that. You know, the, again, the key though is to uh, realize that you've uh, need to make the adjustment and do it. Don't don't just keep going on and keep fighting and keep fighting because what you're going to end up doing is, um, uh, you know, digging yourself into a deeper and deeper hole. Is the you know what I've always found is that I try to fix something and um, you know, I just make it worse, and I make it a little bit worse, and I make it a little bit worse, and pretty soon I've got something that I can't really use, and I'm starting over. And uh, again, adjust the size of your nib, and, and what I'm doing here is holding the shift key down and uh, rolling the mouse up or down a little bit. And, uh, you know, you can use that to get into different areas, of course. And again, play with, am I moving it with the grain, against the grain? And so, you know, if you'll find the effect that works out you know, best in different textures, different images. Uh, every, you know, there isn't one way that's going to work in every situation. It's uh, just finding the right one that's going to uh, get you exactly where you're trying to get to. So anyway, that's just me doing a quick, uh, quick job. Hopefully, that makes enough sense that you can go out there and uh, go nuts. I encourage you guys to uh, grab cam studio or something like that uh, film yourself doing it and see see what you can come up with and throw it up on youtube um, do it uh, and let us all know so we'd love to see some of the cool effects that uh, you guys are coming up with um, anyway thanks again for watching this corel tutorial not a corel draw tutorial per se this is a uh, photo paint tutorial uh, also a clone tool i mean again if you use gimp or photoshop the same technique uh, just different tool uh, again sampling an area uh, playing with the opacity and, and getting the right blend. Uh, anyway, this is your business card guy. We'll talk to you guys next time.